Okay, can we talk about something? Because I think a lot of us do it, but we don't talk about it often enough, and it needs to be said. Stop over romanticizing your love interests. Yes, you too. I'm looking in the mirror, you too. <laughs> I need to stop it as well. There's this Ariana Grande song, and at the beginning of the song, there's someone's voice that I should probably know who it is, but I don't. And they're saying something that sticks with me all the time. I'm about to play it. Please don't copyright me, YouTube, please. It's 10 seconds. Okay, listen to this quote. If you didn't hear that, they said you're in love with a version of a person that you've created in your head. And then the rest, yeah, cool, cool, relevant. But here's the thing. We create like 80% of the people that we are interested in for the most part. I made up the statistic. We put them on this strange pedestal. I think it has to do with just like over romanticizing everything and visualizing things. You know that thing that you do before you go to bed and you start thinking about your crush and you're like making up all these scenarios and they're just like amazing person, you're so compatible, you're so this, you're so that. Like sometimes I feel like we allow that to seep into reality and we actually think that that is who the fuck we're dealing with when really it's not. I don't wanna get disrespectful at all because my ex is a great person in ways, you know? And I'm sure he's an even better person now that he's had time to grow and heal and move on and you know, it happens. But looking back at that relationship, I put him on a pedestal. The guy that I dated before that, same thing. The guy that I dated before that, same thing. I told myself, this is the person for me. This person is everything I want. This person is this and that and this and that. And in reality, I look back, I'm like, huh. Eh. What the fuck? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm sure they're the person for somebody. Just not me. And I put them on this pedestal and I over romanticized everything. I would say, mm, this is fate. Oh, this was this. Oh, they're my soulmate, blah, blah, blah. Like, even the guy that I most recently liked. Like, great guy, wonderful guy, great friend. But sometimes I'm like, did I, did I over romanticize you in my head? Like, <laughs> Maybe I did, maybe I did. I don't really know, I'm still figuring that one out. But I definitely do know that any crush I've had, I have completely, completely made up a whole narrative for this person that I convinced myself was real. So let me break this down for you, okay. You see, the problem with this is that you have these expectations of this person that they don't even know exist. And because of this, you're easily disappointed. That's not healthy, we gotta stop doing this. For example, I remember I went on a date with this one guy, I don't know if it was a date, but we went out and he was like such a gentleman, so chivalrous, whatever, whatever, like a dream come true. I went home and I told my cousin, my roommate, and I was like, oh my God, this guy was perfection. Like he was so amazing. He seems like the guy for me, but I don't know him, but like, wow, he was lovely and he was such a gentleman. He was da -da -da -da. and like, I met the man once. Who am I to be talking about this person? Like, I met him a hundred times and I know his character because now I know this person and I know it was all an act. But I held on to that for so long. I held on to it and I really believed it. And I thought, oh my God, gentlemen still exist. And I was like, wow. And like in my head, I'd be like, oh my God, like, wow, blah, blah, blah. He really raised the bar. If I go on another first date, like, I'm gonna have to get that same treatment. And now, now that I know this person, I'm like, that was fake. It was all fake. But I over romanticized him. And I put him on like, not even a pedestal. I put him, I put him on a tower, okay? And I look back and I'm like, 80% of the good parts of you, I made up. I made them up and I'm making this video because I think that you need to check yourself. Do you like them or the idea of them? Are you infatuated with them or do you genuinely have feelings for them? Because there is a big difference. Somebody can be your type on paper, so you cling on to that. But because of that, you miss so many things. When you're clinging to this ideal version of this person that you've created in your own head, you're probably missing a lot of red flags. For example, with my ex, I always say, the reasons that we broke up are all of the red flags that I saw in the beginning, but I chose to ignore those things because I was too focused on, oh, but he's this, and oh, but we both do this, and we both love this, and oh, but he does this, and he's this kind of person, which is exactly what I'm looking for, but it's like, bitch, what about all the other things? What about all the other things? So I've had to train myself to stop doing that. And I'm gonna tell you a couple ways that I did that. Number one, 
stop making fake scenarios in your head. Stop doing that. A, it can really mess with how you perceive this person. As I'm saying, you're gonna make them up in your mind and you're gonna start to mix reality with your own fantasy and it's not gonna end well. It's not. You're probably gonna be disappointed, I'm so sorry. So stop making fake scenarios in your mind. Two, that can also mess with like the law of attraction. Um, to me, I kind of see that as almost like, not witchcraft, but you know when you're like trying to manifest a person, a specific person? I don't think that's right. I know a girl that like manifested someone who was her husband and um, let me not speak on the relationship. Uh, anyways, I just don't think it's the healthiest thing to do. I don't think you should manifest specific people. I think you should manifest and call love into your life, but I do not think that creating fake scenarios to manifest someone is good because I think that could be bad karma or you know you might just manifest a person that is not meant for you and it could go really fucking horribly and don't get me wrong I've unintentionally done this before by creating the fake scenarios and falling asleep and thinking oh like let me make up this scenario like because it helped me sleep because I have really bad sleeping issues um, but I don't do that anymore do I want to sometimes yeah it's fun as fuck it is so fun but I don't because I don't want to mess with the universe, I don't want to mess with karma, and I don't want to put them on a pedestal that they don't need to be on. So that's one way that I stopped over romanticizing people. Two, I wrote down pros and cons, but factual ones, not ones that I just seen one time. So for example, I give it some time to get to know them before I really decide who they are. So I'm not gonna be like, oh, he's such a gentleman, he's so sweet, he's so considerate, he's a da da da. I don't know these things on like date one, date two, date three. I need to get to know them. So once I get to know them, then I can create a list of pros and cons, red flags and green flags. Put it on paper, look at it, decide, does this make sense? Is this factual? Because when you're writing things down like, oh, he's generous and he's chivalrous because he paid for your first date and he opened the door, you don't know these things. He's on his best behavior. Don't get me wrong, there are some people that are 100% themselves on first dates. For example, I consider myself to be very authentic to who I am on first dates. I'm myself, I'm dry humor, I can be monotone, but I can also be girly, I can be playful, but I can also be serious. I'm myself on first dates, and to me it's like, if you don't like me, you don't like me, that's cool. So, there are people that four months in, you might be like, huh, you know what, your first date with me was an accurate representation of who you are. But there are other people that you'll look back and be like, who was this person? People that I date in the past, I look back at their first date version of themselves, and I'm like, that was you? <laughs> That was you. I remember there's a friend, like a person that I'm friends with today, that the first time we met, I don't know if it was a date, but we like went out. And he was like on his best behavior, best behavior. I thought, wow, wow, like a man. And now I look back and like, don't get me wrong, good person. But I'm like, that was you? <laughs> like, I actually can't believe that that was that person looking back. So. Yeah, just try not to make up who they are. Don't fill in the blanks. That's the problem. That's what we do. We fill in the blanks. Don't do that. Wait for them to show you who they are. That goes into number three. When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. Don't hold on to that day that they did this and oh, they're a really great person and oh, they, they're this and that, but this was just a one-off. You don't know that. You don't know that because people show their true colors eventually and you have to actually take it at face value. When somebody shows you who they are, you need to believe them. If you see them lose their temper and take it out on you and go crazy and call you this and blah, 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 and it's like, you're like, oh, they were just having a bad day and their apology is not sincere or whatever, you, you have to call it out before they apologize, whatever the case may be. You need to take what they did and how they acted and reacted at face value and be like, hmm, okay, noted. Because sometimes people do have bad days, but sometimes you look back and you're like, hmm, this was a pattern. They showed me, they showed me who they were. So yeah, I'm not saying decide who they are after one bad day and be like, oh, they're a bad person. No, no. I'm saying when there's a pattern and somebody starts showing you who they are, you just need to believe them because if not, you're gonna hold on to that fantasy. My therapist was telling me the other day that I tend to create fantasies in my mind. So for example, if this came up because I have a new roommate now who's lovely and I was telling my therapist about her um, shout out to you if you're watching and I was like I really like her so far blah 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 and I was telling her like all of the good so far that I've experienced living with her and she told me you know like just don't get ahead of yourself because you do tend to create fantasy of like who people are and I was like I do huh 
she was like, yeah. And then we opened up a whole other conversation of like how when I tell her about certain people that I've dated or like gone on dates with or my ex or whatever, the fantasy and the delusion that I create or even in like work life or whatever. And I was like, I do? And I noticed that she uses the word fantasy a lot with me because I have such an imagination that I, I make things up in my mind a lot and it's not healthy. So if you're a Pisces, I'm not a Pisces, but if you're a Pisces, you probably do this even more. So be careful <laughs> not to get too astrological because I have a whole other channel for that. But um, yeah, I learned that I do that and I was like, oh my God, that is so scary. I don't want to be that person. Okay, number three, three, I think. <sighs> Stop over fantasizing. I mean, I guess that's over romanticizing, but what I mean by that is stop creating a future that you have no idea if it's gonna exist or not. So for example, maybe your scenarios in your head look like you and this person cooking in the kitchen together or raising your kids together or going on this holiday or whatever because you're making it harder for yourself if it doesn't work out because now it's not just like, oh, we went on three dates and um, this didn't work out and I gotta get over it. Now it's, oh, we went on 27 dates, moved in together, had a baby, went on vacation together, cooked together, cleaned together, had another baby and have a pet together. And now I gotta get over this. That's what you've created in your mind. And even though it's not true, it will make getting over this person harder. And you don't want to set yourself up for disappointment. I'm not saying that that's gonna happen. Sometimes it does work out. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. And you're literally making it harder for yourself to move on by creating all these fantasies and creating all these scenarios so stop thinking too far into the future think about the present think about right now think about who they are to you right now in this very moment and once you start to really truly see okay this is a good person i can see something with them then you can start asking questions about what they want in the future see if you have alignment in your life and then you can start thinking ahead Obviously, you don't want to go into something with the short term in mind if that's not your lifestyle and your way of dating But I also don't think you need to go in it being like I'm gonna get married to this person. This is my future person I feel it. I see it. I know it because you just you don't you don't all the time I said that about two other guys that I dated like I was like, oh my god I feel like this is my person like within like a couple weeks of knowing them. What the fuck did I know about them? nothing Clearly, clearly nothing. <laughs> and the worst part about that is that when you get over them, you're kind of getting over someone that doesn't exist. So it's really not even worth the pain or the stress or the heartache because that person did not exist. Don't fall in love with potential. Fall in love with the reality of who is in front of you. Anyways, I just wanted to make this video because I feel like <sighs> I've done this pretty recently. <laughs> pretty recently and my therapist had to hear about it a lot uh, for no reason. I did it to myself and I've done it many times and I probably won't do it again and neither should you. I feel like I kind of want to start this like series on my channel where it's kind of like big sis advice. I don't know if I'm qualified to do that because sometimes my life be a mess but you learn from the mess so maybe I'll like, maybe I can be like your internet big sister. Like, can I be like a self-proclaimed internet big sis? Or do people have to call me that? And then I can be like, yeah, okay, I'll be your big sis. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know. Anyways, uh, I am the youngest of my family. So maybe it's just, I want to be someone's big sister. I've always wanted a little sister. But anyways, okay. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something from it. Please, please, please stop over romanticizing these people. Ooh, listen to the song that I was mentioning in the beginning called um, In My Head by Ariana Grande. Let me, let me just read a couple of the lyrics. Most of you probably know it because, I mean, it's Ariana Grande. But even just like the first few lyrics, it's like, painted a picture, I thought I knew you well, I got a habit of seeing what isn't there, caught in the moment, tangled up in your sheets, when you broke my heart, I said you only wanted half of me, my imagination's too creative. And then she like goes on to like basically talk about it was all in my head, I invented you. It's okay, anyways, I gotta go. <laughs> I gotta go, but listen to the song. Um, stop over romanticizing people and find another fake scenario. You know what fake scenario you should use in your head instead of imagining um, your life with someone? Create fake scenarios of the things that you want to manifest. So for example, if you want to be an actor, visualize yourself on a red carpet. If you want to be a YouTuber, visualize yourself at like, I don't know, fucking VidCon or something. Do people still go to VidCon? Visualize yourself with like fellow influencers or something. Change your reality 
by imagining it in your mind but with the right things do it to the right things not people all right with that being said i am out i will see you in the next video thank you for watching and uh give it a like and a subscribe and a comment and all that okay bye